me now. Amen. Talk to me now. Amen. Talk to me now. <laughs> you know what gets me is he's he says I'm going to have the neighbor come and take your wives, and I'm going to have you always fighting. They have to suffer for what you did. They have to suffer for what you did. Your kids have to suffer for what you did. If you don't take care of yourself and you die prematurely, the only one you're hurting is your babies. I die today, I'm not gonna complain. Seriously, give me my mansion, my street of gold, I'll talk with Paul, and I'll talk with, 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 with the Apostle Paul, and St. Peter, sit on Jesus' lap, like my pop said earlier, and hey, hey, I hope you make it. Meanwhile, I'm gonna leave out on a bunch of little babies, wondering what they're gonna do without their daddy. Right? Talk to me, man, this is real. This is real. You got to make a change right now, right here today. Right, I'm talking to the saved man. I'm talking to the Christian. I'm talking to the man. This is David. This is David. Symptoms of my sin are killed. So, 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 so everybody got to pay for that. So David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said to David, the Lord also has put away your sin. You shall not die. That's what I dig about. See, here's now, here's now where David's, David's lineage starts coming into, into the light. Where God says, you know what, I put a lot of faith in you. I, 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 I born you for such a time as this. I, I put some, I don't want to waste everything I put in you. So I'm not going to kill you. Isn't that just like God? He looks beyond all of my faults. And he saw my need. And he saw my need. If it would have been me, I'd have killed David twice. That's why I'm not God. And I'll mess you all up. He said, I'm going to keep you alive. Only within the sound of my voice, God said, I'm going to keep you alive. I'm going to keep you alive so that you can change some things. So David said, so 14, however, because by this deed you have given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blasphemy the child also who was born to you shall surely die. Then Nathan departed to his house. The symptoms of my sin is killing me. Okay, I'm going to finish. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. And the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bore. And remember, notice that God, notice that the prophet, notice that the author never calls her by name and never calls her David's wife. He continues to call her Uriah's wife. Uriah's wife. You married Uriah's wife. You slept with Uriah's wife. You adulterated with Uriah's wife. We don't know her name, and she never gets the honor of being called the queen. 16, therefore, I'm almost done. David, therefore, pleaded with God for the child. Therefore, David, de David, therefore, pleaded with God for the child. And David fasted and went in and lay all night on the ground. So the elders of the house rose, went to him, raised up to him from the ground. But he would not, nor did he eat food with them. Then on the seventh day, it came to pass that the child died. And the servant of David were afraid to tell him that the child was dead. For they said, indeed, while the child was alive, we spoke to him, and we would not heed, he would not heed our voice. How can we tell him that the child is dead? He may do some harm. When David saw that his servants were whispering, David perceived that the child was dead. Therefore, David said to his servants, is the child dead? And they said, he is dead. So David arose from the ground, washed and anointed himself and changed his clothes. And he went into the house of the Lord and worshiped. Then he went into his own house. And when he requested that they set food before him and he ate. I'm only going to 23 verse 21. Then his servant said to him, what is this that you have done? 
You fasted and wept for the child while he was alive, but when the child died, you arose and ate food? And he said, while the child was alive, I fasted and wept, for I said, who can tell whether the Lord will be gracious to me that the child may live? But now he is dead. Why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. This is what makes David more special than you and I. This is what makes David the apple of God's eye. This is what makes David most famous. This is why we can read the Psalms today of a murdering adulterer and still grab a hold of the hand of God. Because he sat at the table and God put the sins of David in front of him. And while the child was alive, while the sin was alive, he fasted and prayed that God would allow him to keep the sin in his life. My, my, my. Come on. Amen. Amen. Lord, 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 please, Lord, Lord, I'll go to church. Just leave these secrets in my life, Lord. Please, I'll go to church. Leave them in my life. Lord, Lord, I, just let me hold it. Lord, let me drink just on the weekends, Lord, just every once in a while, Lord. I'll go to church, but this one, I want to stay alive. This one, I want to keep to my, Lord, I, I, you know, Lord, I'll be a good husband, I'll be, but I'm a bad daddy. Let me hold on to being a bad daddy. Lord, please, I fast and, and I pray, Lord, just let me keep this sin in my life. Let this one sin be in my life. You can take, you can take the rest. You can take the rest, but let this sin, let this sin, let this sin stay in my life. Fasting, and I'm praying that God will let me keep this sin. I'll get rid of the rest, but let me keep this one. Let me live in sin this time. I'll get rid of every. But then David, then well, you know what? You know what happens if the child would have stayed alive? If the child would have been born? Yeah, I apologize, Uncle Horns. I would never disrespect you like that. Uh, you know what? What? I'm sorry, Brandon. I would never kick your drums. <laughs> Give us all. Be sure to drop it. If the child had been born, they would say, There goes the child that was born out of sin. Amen. They would never say, There goes the king. And he would be at the 7 Eleven with, with his mom and getting slurpees. And they would not say there is the queen. They would say there is that little boy that was born out of sin. If you don't get rid of that sin in your life, they are going to say there goes Victor, the drug addict. Amen. Come on, come Amen. On, come on. They'll never recognize me as a man of God. They'll, and unless I allow God to kill the sin, which I love. I love my sin. I slept with it. over in the middle of the night and I hid it from everybody else and I said this is mine and I involved other people to help me hide it because if I can just have this one little sin but God took it from me and I mourn it you mourn it you mourn it God tried to get you out of that relationship a hundred times, and you mourned it. Don't take him from me. 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 Don't take her from me. Don't take it from me. Don't take it away from me. Please, please, I'll eat right tomorrow. I'll start fasting tomorrow. I'll start, don't take my money. I'll, I'll start giving tomorrow. I'll start doing it tomorrow. I'll ask him to stop hitting me tomorrow. I'll stop drinking tomorrow. I'll stop with this one, please, please. And God takes it from you, and he casts it away, and he kills it. And we sit at the table and mourn our sin. Hallelujah. We mourn it. Oh, I miss getting high so bad. Oh, I miss alcohol so bad. Oh, I miss my food so bad. I miss pop so bad. I miss candy so bad. I miss fighting so bad. I miss lying so bad. I miss stealing so bad. I miss fornicating so bad. And you mourn it. But David gets up and he says, he says, he says, there's nothing I can do now that he's gone. Why should I 
bring it back again. saying to me when she said you have more potential she wasn't saying the things that I should receive she was talking about the things that I need to let go you hear me Amen. Amen. I got to require more of myself I've got to face the consequences and lay out on the fasting table and say if it be your will but nevertheless, not my will. Your will. I want to change the world. I want a better marriage. I want to be a better father. I want to be a better husband. But there's some things that I got to change in the deeper depths that nobody sees or talks about. Because I'm in love with sin. I'm in love with it. I cry for it. I whine for it. I mourn about it. If I didn't go to church, I could do whatever I wanted to. If I wasn't a pastor, I could act however I want to. And there I sit at the table like David bidding for the son of the wife of Uriah. When God said, I would have given you more. accepting the consequences is that when it's over you feel better you feel better when you pay your bills on time you feel better talk to me now when you put a hard day's labor in at the end of the day you feel better when you're a good husband and you lay next to your wife at the end of the day you feel better I'll take it I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take the consequences. I'll do the time. I'll walk through the fire. Because I love you so much. And I'm so sorry that I fasted and prayed for my sin. I fasted and prayed so God would give me back my sin. But David loves God so much. And he said, you know what? I'm not going to mourn anymore. Because one day I'm going to be reunited. But I'm ready to accept the consequences. I'm ready for the fingers to be pointed. I'm ready for the words and the rumors to start behind my back. But at the end of the day, they got to know one thing, church. I love my Lord. I'm in love with him, and I want to go deep.